welcome back to Rare Brew Crafts. I'm Sarah and today we are going to be looking at how I made these gorgeous little pegs. So these are, as you can see, miniature pegs. Um, and I have encrusted the peg with all sorts of, let's see if I can get it to focus a bit better, all sorts of um, shiny bits, some pearls, um, little bits of gold and some glass glitter which the camera doesn't do it justice, but it sparkles and shines like nobody's business. It's gorgeous. Um, and I did some with the larger shells and then I did some with these little tiny shells. You can see the encrusting a little bit more on the bottom of this peg. Um, and I thought it might be good to show you how I made them. So uh, if you saw a recent haul that I got from Bead Park, you'll know that I got these pegs. So they came in a great big bag like this and there's something like I don't know if it's 50 or 100 but there's, there's a, a lot I don't think I'll ever run out of uh, pegs I got these pegs because I love the size they are um, small but they're not the really really tiny ones I find the tiny ones are no good for actually clipping anything whereas these are big enough that they will actually clip they will actually hold um, you know bits together as you're gluing them or they'll slip you know clip nicely onto pocket letters that sort of thing and they stay in place because they're a nice size um, but they're not a full um, clothespin size peg size uh, in the UK these little wooden ones are I found are quite hard to get hold of I can get the full size ones uh, and I can get the tiny, tiny mini ones actually from some craft shops. But this size I have found more challenging to get hold of. Uh, the only time I've ever seen this sort of size ones are around the Christmas time. Um, you'll sometimes see them in places like Wilco's as part of a set for, for hanging Christmas cards. That's the only time I've seen them. Um, so, first things first, I'm going to work on... The actual peg so just move this and see if white stops it there my camera just wants to autofocus all the time it's driving me to distraction so all i'm going to do is slip the peg apart like so so just slip that wire off and just slip it out of the grooves and it comes apart and then i'm going to give this um peg a coat of gesso so i'm just using this um studio acrylics one from pebio um and it literally is just going to be um, a little coat just to sort of seal the peg um and i just like the chalky sort of finish that you get from the from the gesso i will be going over it with a coat of paint so um this is just to sort of prime it if you like so all i'm going to do is paint the whole of the peg being mindful of what side of the peg you're going to see once it's all finished so whilst i'm going to coat the whole thing i want to make sure that the back side of the peg is the one that's got the nicer finish on it um, because obviously that's the bit that you're going to see the other thing just to be mindful of when you're painting is once you've given it a coat of paint just bring your paintbrush back down through whilst you know sort of dry down through that channel just to clear that channel so that it doesn't impinge on the wire of the of the um peg once you have finished painting it and, you, and you're putting it all back together and again you don't want a big glob of dried paint in there that won't allow you to um, put your put your peg back together so i'm just going to pause the video while i go and give both sides a coat of um, gesso i'm also yeah, hold it going to give the it a coat of this linen acrylic paint um, you can use any color you want i've gone for this because i wanted quite a subtle background um, and I, I sort of wanted that sort of golden pale sandy color look to to my um peg obviously depending on what theme you're going for because you don't have to go for the seashell theme you can go for any theme whatsoever and you can then pick a color that is going to coordinate with what whatever theme you're you're going for so if you're going to do florals you could do something that's going to match your florals you could do sort of steampunk i mean it literally the the possibilities are endless um, and they make such lovely embellishments so i'll come back once this bit's done okay so the peg is now painted and dry <clears throat> so i need to just pop it back together so to do that all i do is pop the spring into the little divot that it sits in 
um, and pull one of the arms around and into place pick up the other part and do the same again so just get my peg sitting on the spring properly and then pull the arm round and into place and now I've got my peg all back together and working and it's all painted in this lovely um, linen colour so I just gave it one coat of the um, gesso and then one coat of the linen acrylic paint and I'm just grabbing what I should already have had to hand and I haven't um, I'm just grabbing a uh, distressing tool and on it I'm going to pop a little bit of distress oxide in the antique linen just because I want mine to look a little bit vintagey a little bit shabby so I'm just going around the edges of the peg with a little bit of that antique linen and because I've painted it linen it's you know just a little bit of shading to the edges um, and then I also want to distress a little bit further, looking for the right tool. And I'm going to use a little bit of walnut stain. So this I'm just using the regular distress uh, oxide, uh, distress ink, not the oxide one, uh, just because I've got it to hand. Um, and I'm just going around the edges again, just catching the very edges of the peg just to give it a little bit more depth and make it just look a little bit more sort of vintagey. Anything that goes too dark, you can just knock it back again with the, the oxide one and just play around with that until you've got it the way that you like it. So now that that's ready and, and all painted, I can now start the, uh, the process of encrusting it a little bit. So I'll just bring the camera in a bit so you can see what I'm doing so obviously I've got my peg I've got some white glue this is just um, Anita's tacky glue uh, I've just got it in a fine nose bottle and all I'm going to do is coat the top sort of um, two quarters of the peg give it a good generous coating like so I don't need to do this middle bit because this is where um, it's going to be sort of covered by the shell so there's no point putting stuff on there but then this very end bit of the peg again you'll see that so I am just going to coat that one so now I can start the process of um, in sort of encrusting my peg so I want it to look like you know it's been sat down at the bottom of the ocean and things have collected on it over time so I've got this wheel of nail art um, bits that I picked up from Ali oh, ages ago. Um, this one is actually all sea themed, which was part of the reason I um, went for the shell theme for my project. And I'm just going to go through my wheel, cut, sort of selecting bits that I want to add onto the project. Obviously, make sure it's the right way up, like so. Uh, what else have we got? Some little tiny shells. I'll pop one of those up there. And you want to sort of coat the, the top of the peg quite well. You know, with all the bits that we've glued, we want lots and lots of elements. So this is just all different shapes and things. So I'm just selecting a few bits from in here. Just laying them in. This one is just all gold, so there's slightly darker gold. And again, it's all just various shapes. There's no sort of theme to this one. Like that. And then I've also got some gems. I've been using the champagne um, gems. But again, you just pick anything that goes with the theme of, um, you know, whatever it is that you're creating. I'm going to put a few of these gems in amongst here mm. to hang her on there doesn't want to go the right way up okay we've got it so and i've also got one stuck to my finger it clearly wants to be part of the project there we go 
so once I've got that, obviously I've still got quite a lot of glitter free there, and and that's that's fine. That's what I want because I'm going to now coat it in this um, this is diamond dust, so it's like the German glass glitter. So all I'm going to do is coat it wherever I've got that glue showing, and I haven't got um, a little element from the nail art stuff. I'm going to give it a, a, a liberal dousing with the glass glitter. Obviously you could use any glitter, it doesn't have to be the diamond dust. I just like the the way the light catches on the diamond dust. So now I'm going to um, set that off to one side and let that dry and I do recommend that you do let this, this bit dry. Let that white glue totally dry before you um, start trying to stick anything else to it because otherwise what happens is um, I use hot glue for the next step and the hot glue will just lift the white glue if it's not dry um, it won't sort of nothing will stick to to itself so you just need to give that a good you know 10-15 minutes and let that really really dry um, and I'm gonna let my hot glue gun heat up while I'm doing that the other thing that you'll need is you know the piece that you're going to use um, as your focal image on your on your peg so for me I've got all these bits of greenery that um, were cut for another project and I didn't use them um, but I thought they looked a bit like seaweed so um, I've just picked off a few pieces of um, of this so literally all I do is just pick one of the, the pieces off you can see this one's been picked to death from doing the other ones so I'm going to put those to one side and I'm using a shell now my shell um, I've got some paper clay ones that I made with a mold they're really beautiful but for this one I decided to use this trim so you can get this trim in you can get it in most sort of craft stores you can get it online um, but it's basically shells on a on a thread um, so that's all the big ones there, but it has actually got the little shells as well. I've just cut all, cut them all off further down because I've used them. Um, and what I've done is I've actually snipped the shells off of th the thread. I've given it two coats of gesso and let that gesso dry. I've then sort of dabbed at it just using the um, Distress Oxide. I've just dabbed, and because it's got the oxide ink, the... the gesso I can't talk because it's got the gesso underneath it it takes really well and the ink will sit on that gesso I've then also got a paintbrush an old paintbrush and on the paintbrush I've got some stays on ink in timber brown I think it is can't actually get my inks right now because my drawer is a mess yeah timber brown so all I've done is take a little bit of the stays on on the end of the paintbrush and then I've just tapped it a, sort of in a line across the shell and I've left it nice and sort of patchy um, because obviously that's what a shell you, you know you don't get a block colour on a shell <clears throat> and then I've also introduced a little tiny bit of um, a ready colour I think that was an aged mahogany I've added a little bit of aged mahogany um, again with a brush just in there um, to give it that sort of shell look and I've put a bit of the dark um, on the bottom there just to make it look a bit like a natural shell um, so that is the shell that I'm going to use. So I'm going to just go and make uh, some lunch and I'm going to leave the peg to dry and then I will come back and we will just do the final touches of putting those couple of bits together. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. Um, you do want to make sure that you do leave it, like I say, um, so that your, your hot glue and your white glue don't um, react. Although, to be fair, you could probably do this all with like glossy accents or with the... Um, Beacon three in one. You don't three in one. That one. You don't necessarily need to use a hot glue gun. I just do because it's convenient um, and it's off to the side of me and it's usually on. So um, that's just what I've been using. So all I'm going to do is take a little glob of the hot glue and I'm going to start off by popping my little stems on where I want them to be like so that's cooler now so I can touch it and then I want to think about where I want my um, shell to go and because these shells are sort of almost hollow on the inside I do put a little bit of card 
I'm just off on the inside of it um, so that the glue has got something to, to grab to the peg and to the um, to the shell. So I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue inside the shell and a layer of card, a bit more glue from the glue gun that I just dropped on the floor. Yeah, I don't know. And another layer of card. And you can see that that now has built it up so that it's the same um, level as the edge of the, the shell. So now when I come to glue that onto the peg, it's not just got those two edges that it's going to be hanging on to. It will be hanging on um, to the card as well. And that will just make it um, glue on a bit better. So then I've put a nice oops, dob of glue and dropped it on my desk, as you do. Uh, didn't mean to do that obviously I'm gonna then pop that on my peg and I've got a second or two to move it before my glue goes um, cool although it does cool quite quickly in my craft room at the moment because it's cold cold outside and um, because I'm in the conservatory it makes it quite cool in here and that's it and there we've got a beautiful little peg that I could add on to um, you know a journal or a notebook or a, a mini album I could put it on a pocket letter you know they're, they're beautiful you could send them out as little happy mail gifts you could put a few in a little packet and send them out as part of a happy mail I just think they're really beautiful and, and the beauty of this project is you can use whatever you've got in your stash it doesn't have to be seashells if you've got little mermaids in your in your stash if you've got some little buttons um, you know for, for Easter or something little chicks or whatever you can make this project work for absolutely any theme so um, as always the links to bead park will be in the description box below this video along with the link to the pegs to, to the actual um, bag of pegs that I bought or that I was sent um, and there's also a voucher code down there so if you do want to place an order you can get some money off so that's it um, I, I do hope that you have fun and if you've got some pegs in your stash I'd be really interested to see what um, styles and themes you come up with so do let me know if you create any of these if you post them on your YouTube channel or if you um, post them to Instagram let me know in the comments section below I'd really like to come over and see what you've been creating that's it from me for now I will be back very soon in another craft video